got a wonderful program lined up for you today. Got some great music you don't want to miss. We got Al Jaron Wright and the Triumphant Praise, and they are going to rock the house tonight. I'm telling you, some really good music. And then we also have uh, Cesar Perez. He's the author of The Great Pretender and a fascinating book. I got to talk to Cesar right before the show and uh, learn a little bit about this book. But we're also going to learn about the author. Um, he's from Spain. He's been here for a while, and I think he's already gotten a southern accent. So, um, But he got a fascinating story. My first guest tonight is Cesar Perez. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And uh, Cesar, you're an author. You've written two books, but we're going to be talking about your latest book, The Great Pretender, tonight. Mm -hmm. But uh, first off, let's learn a little bit about Cesar, you're, uh, you're, was born, you were born in Spain mm -hmm. and moved to the U.S. Talk mm -hmm. to us about Spain and your whole coming to America type of deal. So can I start by saying one thing? Go ahead. That's not fair. Those things are, <laughs> I, I cannot follow up that. They set the bar right here. Now you know how I feel every Monday when I'm on I know, and everybody's going to be like, this guy's just not cutting it, so give me a chance. I get it all the time, yeah. brother. Yes, yes. So, yes, I am from Spain. Uh, and I was an exchange student when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. Back, I'm not going to tell you the year, uh, but this was my sophomore year in high school. It was like school. 2014, wasn't it? Yeah, just a couple <laughs> years ago. Um, so I was in Idaho for a year, and um, my dad asked me, do you want to do it again? You know, just keep the English going, get uh -huh. it a little bit better. As you can see from the accent, you don't lose it all. Uh -huh. uh, but I've been working on it. So the next year, I was sent to South Carolina, and um, I loved it here, but at some point, I was ready to go home and just resume my life there. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, two or three weeks before I was supposed to go back to Spain, I fell in love. I was going to um, say, did you meet a girl? I met a girl. <laughs> I went back to Spain, and then I told my dad, is, this, this is the one. Uh -huh. And uh, so they supported me, and here I am. Wow. Um, about... 29, 30 years later. Wow. Four kids later and just meant to be. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, now, were you raised in a Christian home in Spain, or how mm -hmm. is Christianity uh, in, in, your, in, in the region you were from in Spain, I guess? So Spain is uh, Catholic, uh -huh. um, but very non-practicing. Um, growing up, I met very few people that actually uh, practiced. Uh -huh. uh, so on top of that, I was at a boarding school and um, it was, those were some rough years. Um, I, the priests, they were there. They, they were not very good at sharing the gospel. So uh, it was kind of, I kind of got turned off against religion. Uh -huh. That is not trying to characterize the uh, Catholic church at all. Right, it's I just understand. this place was different. So when I came here, I was uh, very turned off by religion. Mm -hmm. So especially coming to the South when I started to meet real Christians, uh -huh. um, it was quite the culture shock, even oh, more man. so than, than the food and the places and uh, in the language. Uh -huh. it, was, it, was, it didn't feel real to me. It just felt uh, put on. Uh -huh. um, but over time, I realized that it was very much real. Right. Um, and I, I realized that I had a sinful nature that I needed to um, needed help with, mm -hmm. and that I could only get that from Jesus Himself. Yeah, I know. I, I spent a lot of time in uh, Bulgaria, and over there, it's Orthodox Church, mm -hmm. and it's just very ritualistic. You know, you you right. go to church because it's kind of what you do on Sunday. You know, it's not that you you want to go to church. You want to be there to to feed your soul. You just go because that's what you do. You know, it's kind of like, right you know, anything, kind of a social gathering, and then it's very scripted, and, you know, that's it. There's no real relationship or growing in a lot, you know, like the Orthodox Church. Correct. So when we're in evangelical churches over there, it's just totally different. And, you know, even over there, the people get blown away that's coming from an Orthodox background, and uh, they, they feel that, you know, the Holy Spirit for the first time. Maybe. Right. And, you know, I'm not saying the Orthodox doesn't do a lot of good. They do. Sure. And I'm sure there's a lot of people in the Orthodox Church going to, going right. to heaven and that's saved. But, you know, <clears throat> it's just a lot different when you start seeking that relationship with Christ. Right. So. The fun part was when I would go back to Spain to visit family uh -huh. and friends, and I was not a Christian. <laughs> I talked different. Um, I, I really wanted to share my faith with them, and mm -hmm. um, 
they were really kind of wondering what had happened to me yeah. <laughs> here. Um, Did your parents see a big difference in your life? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Wow. They just wondered what they did to my brain here. <laughs> you know, uh, but over time, though, the more that I would, once you share the message, you share the message. Then he was like, you need to be quiet and just live it. Let uh -huh. them see a different person. Uh, that started to, to really help them see that it was real, that there really had been a change, mm -hmm. and that this SSR was a whole lot better than the other one. Right. Now, do you still have uh, brothers and sisters in Spain? I have I a sister. your father's still there. My father's there. I have my sister in Spain. Um, my brother is here, and he lives in Jacksonville. Okay. He's been here about three or four years. Okay. Mm -hmm. So do you get to make it to Europe often, to Spain often? I don't get to make it too often. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're busy. We yeah. have uh, four children, work. Well, like um, you said, this is expensive. home to you now. Yeah, so. this, this is home, this, but I, yeah. I definitely... Would like to go more often. Yeah. And the next time we go, we want to take our kids. That'd be um, fun. Have they ever been before? Uh, my daughter was there uh, when she was about one year old. Oh, okay. And uh, well, and my second daughter, Madison, she's been there, but she was still in the oven. Uh huh. She was still cooking. So. <laughs> wasn't quite done yet. Yeah, right? she wasn't quite done. So she doesn't remember a whole lot of yeah. it. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Well. How long ago was it? Now you go to Taylor's First Baptist. I now. do. I've been mm -hmm. there for, oh, quite, you know, a couple About 13 of 13 years. 14 mm -hmm. years. That's awesome. Um, where, when was it when God really started talking to you, saying that, you know, I want you to start writing for me? So that was probably, actually, when I wrote my first book, um, it, it's, it's fiction, but it had a lot to do with, with my actual history, because mm -hmm. um, I wanted to share that story, but I fictionalized it to some extent. Um, when I first started writing it, I wasn't, real, I wasn't as close a Christian as I became. Mm -hmm. um, so I did that more from a sort of fictionalized autobiography type standpoint. Right. Um, and, and I like that. You know, people mm -hmm. tell me, you know, I've had it occasionally, you could write a biography or something like I never thought about a fictionalized autobiography. I can yeah. make myself thinner and smarter <laughs> and better looking in the book. I like that a lot. So. Well, it was really funny, though, because um, I gave it to, you know, when you write a book, it's got a lot of issues that, that you, don't, you don't see because right. you're, cause you're like, I think it's ready. And people read it and they're like, what were you thinking? <laughs> um, so I actually gave it to one of my professors at USC Upstate, uh -huh. and he marked it. And a lot of, he basically wrote a lot of comments just like, you're really awesome. <laughs> I mean, like, you really are awesome. So I had to kind of, you know, uh, uh -huh. get more real with it. Uh -huh. um, but this, this other book, this was just um, things that I was very convicted of uh -huh. and that I wanted to tell through, uh, through story form. Yeah. yeah. Well... How long has this book been out? Again, it's called The Great Pretender. Mm -hmm. And is that the Ashley Bridge there? Or is that the... So it's set in, in it's set in Charleston. Yeah. And the book just came out in February. Excellent. So mm -hmm. it's hot off the press then. Yes. So yes. Talk, talk to us about, um, of course, you, you, this is your second book. Mm -hmm. Leading up to this book, what, what gave you the idea for the book? Was there anything going on in your life or in lives around you? So it was it was very interesting um my son and i had gone to about nine years ago we went to a baseball game to see his nephew playing and um after that we went to eat at ryan's whenever ryan's were uh -huh. more around we missed and ryan's. uh and we, yeah i know <laughs> and we were just sitting there and i just noticed a man um sitting by himself in a table um and he just had this look about him that they really like it's a, he was really troubled, and my mind just kind of started going to, he looks so troubled. I wonder what happened to him. Uh -huh. So I just created a story around that, um, and I really wanted to, I think there's two things that are really important to be able to share the gospel. One of them is apologetics, mm -hmm. um, and the other one is relationship. You have to have, be able to create a relationship with somebody to earn their, tr their trust in the ability to share something as personal mm -hmm. as the gospel. Uh, and apologetics being just common sense explanations that um, help people understand the Christian faith right. uh, and provide evidence that it, it is true. But most people are not really going to pick up an apologetics book unless they're, unless they're really interested in uh -huh. it. Uh, so I wanted to weave in those, uh, those 
arguments and of course build a relationship so that hopefully that opens up people to to think differently uh -huh. uh, and and maybe consider things that they've never considered before right um, but you're in the story and these characters there's a ton of things that happen um, in the book um, that I'm sure we'll, we'll we're going to dive into some extent. it in a minute yes, um, for sure but that I just wanted to to share to some extent apologetic arguments and uh, and build a relationship with the reader so that they could like trust the characters right. and trust the story and trust the truth that's behind it. Right. I like that because you, I mean, you've got to have both, not only apologetics and relationship, but relationships with, with God, your relationship right. with God and relationship with who you're trying to witness to. Correct. Um, it's so hard to convince a stranger that you need to follow a stranger. If you don't know God and you're not on that personal relationship, why should somebody believe you or even listen to you? Right. So we need to get our, our heart, our relationship right first. I mean, right. now don't, you know, once you get saved, don't wait to share it with other people until your relationships have that perfect goal by any means. But it's hard to explain to a stranger about a stranger for right. you. So, wow. But yeah, let's take a break for a song. When we come back, I want to dig into the story because it's, it's so relevant for mm -hmm. now. I mean, this book came out a good time in our history. Um, mm -hmm. What we're seeing on the news with, uh, you know, atheism and all the, the liberal things that's coming out that when you moved to the U.S., it wasn't like this, was no, it, Cesar? it was very different. Very different. And, of course, a lot of the things that's going on in our country today, the rest of the world has known for, for years, Correct. you know. And I still believe that God has his hand on America, and I still believe that we're in the Bible Belt of America, Absolutely. you know. Um, but it, America's changing, and, and we cannot change with it, and I think it's not too late to get it back to God. Correct. That's for Absolutely. sure. So right now, let's break, uh, take a break for a song. Algeron Wright and Triumphant Praise are singing another wonderful song, Ready to Serve. We're going to continue our conversation with Cesar Perez, author of The Great Pretender. Beautiful cover, by the way. Thank you. And uh, right before the show, I got on Amazon. and uh, you get one? I, I, I'm going to. Okay. I'm going to get a Kindle edition because <laughs> like, I've got, I don't know, 100 and something books on this thing right here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love uh, uh, soft editions. But you had... Five star, five out of five star reviews good on start. Amazon. That's good pretty start. good, man. Yes. That's Thank pretty you. good. So uh, I saw that and I was like, man, I'm gonna have to step up tonight. I got a five star author on tonight. <laughs> so, but uh, tell us about the book and tell us about the characters in the book. Okay. So the book, uh, if I can summarize it, is about this uh, man who uh, grew up um, as an atheist. Um, and rejected God all of his life. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's come to a point in his life where um, he's got this gnawing questions that have to be answered that he can't put aside. Why am I here? What is my purpose? What happens after I die? Mm -hmm. uh, so he's really struggling uh, with this. And uh, he sort of embarks in a, in a journey of self-discovery. Uh, he just needs to, to be free of the, of the life that he's in. And the people that he's around, because they're not helping a whole lot. They right. don't have the answers. So his quest takes him to Charleston, South Carolina. And that's why you have the uh, Ravenel Bridge nice there. Ravenel because, Bridge. Yes. Because okay. he's, uh, unless they changed the name since we did the cover. Okay. <laughs> um, but it's, it's set in Charleston. And when he gets there, he meets a, a, a woman who is just full of life. Um, she's got this uh, vivacious nature and just this intoxicating spirit. And it's like nobody he's ever met, because um, most of the people where he lives are, are not very real. Mm -hmm. um, they just kind of pretend, uh, especially because his dad is, uh, is a very famous atheist and sort of um, spiritual guru of the time. Uh -huh. uh, so most people just pretend with him so that they can be associated. Right. Anyway, he falls in love with her, and um, there's a big catch. The reason that she is the way she is is because she's a Christian. <laughs> and that represents everything that he was uh, raised um, to, to despise. Right. Um, so as, as their relationship grows and their worldviews, uh, he comes with, from the postmodern worldview and, he, um, and she comes from the Christian worldview, they, they collide. Uh -huh. and, um, and that forces him to start to re-examine everything that he was raised uh, to believe, and it doesn't all, only force him, he wants to, um, and it's, 
it's the, the so the the book is about that journey through uh -huh. his crisis of belief, and uh, he how he reconciles everything that he is with everything that he's experiencing through her and other people, um, and who he ultimately decides to become. Wow, wow, you know a lot of people in this day and age are atheists. I mean, science in the last couple of hundred years has really taken off and given us a lot of explanations for a lot of things. And people take them as fact and dogma. And that, of course, you know, we all know a couple hundred years ago, science also told us the world was flat. So, right. you know, take it for what it is. But a lot of atheists now, their sole purpose in life is to crush Christianity is to crush Christians, to hate anything that has to do with the Creator. And that just blows my mind. Now, I can understand right. people hating Christians because, I mean, from a worldly view, I mean, they see Christians, they bicker, they fight amongst themselves, they say, you're wrong, you're wrong, this is wrong, whatever, you know. Right. But to hate Christ, I mean, that makes no sense to me. Um, this is a you know, if you believe what it's telling you, or even if you don't believe, but just take it for what it is, or just listen to the story of Christ, um, it's just a story of love. Right. And how can you hate love? It's just beyond me. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's just the devil inside of people, you know. Mm -hmm. But, and that's what we're in today. But how did the Christian, what was the girl's name in here? Kate. Kate. How did she handle this when she found out he was an atheist or did she reject him did she love him or can you give that away without divulging mm. too much of the book again folks five stars right here five stars <laughs> so she gives she gives him a chance yeah. um she doesn't judge him and completely gets away from him because I, I mean jesus when he was on earth he was finding people that needed him yeah. uh they needed god um so she gave him a chance of course things will have to come to a point where she would not be able to be with him because they would be unequally yoked and it right. just couldn't work out. But what's really interesting is, is the point that you brought up because um, his father is, um, he's, he's anti-religion and his whole mission in life has become to do two things, to disprove Christianity and to um, improve uh, the theory of evolution. Mm -hmm. And He's a pretty egotistical guy, and uh, he, he challenges um, a, a, a famous apologist, a famous prover of the faith, if you will, uh -huh. um, to a national debate um, where they're going to debate two things. The, is there ulti such a thing as ultimate truth, and uh, is there a God? Uh -huh. And if there's a God, does he really want a relationship with us? So there's different set of events that happens, and... Her, her dad ends up being the one that has to take the place to debate him. Wow. So a little spoiler alert, wow. um, but there's plenty of twists. Uh -huh. So there's tons of them. Um, but it's, of course, that really challenges their relationship. Right, um, yeah. And, but it's, it's a God thing because when Nathan, he's the main character of the book, he, um, when he's sitting there listening to the debate, um, her dad is using a lot of arguments that point to the fact that there has to be a creator, mm -hmm. um, that everything that we see and feel and touch and smell um, has to be part of the creation, mm -hmm. uh, that even though we can't see God, uh, because that's how he's, he's chosen to be, um, that you can see his fingerprint exactly. and his design in absolutely everything. Yeah. So he uses a lot of those examples that I actually play out the debate um, in the book and uh, he's sitting, Nathan's sitting there listening and, and just like he's getting pricked. Uh -huh. uh, and something sparks inside of him that he really wants to find out more about it. Wow. Uh, and that's what sets him on that journey to go. I, I at least have to check it out because if you don't believe in God, um, you probably have not thought about certain things that you owe to yourself to think about yeah. um, and you, you'll find them there. Well, I'm telling you, our atheist viewers, you only get one shot of this life. I mean, that's what Christians and atheists can agree on. You know, mm -hmm. I don't think any atheists believe in, you know, reincarnation. You know, right, right. Um, you deserve to look into this. I mean, Absolutely. just think if you're wrong. I mean, but to go back to, to evolutionists and, and, and people that don't believe in creation, mm -hmm. when you think about it, 
if one molecule mm -hmm. was birthed out of nothing, that would be a miracle. Right. But when you have billions and trillions of organisms that you know that we know of, this, the, probably more that we don't even know of, and right. then you look at what's in the universe that you know the known and the unknown universe. There's no way it was just you know boom, it's here. Right. There's no way. Right. No way. And, and I think about things like this all the time. Um, just just for us to be able to breathe. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many things that have to happen for us to be able to to just breathe, You're much right. less be be able to. Uh, support life. Exactly. I mean, you have to have trees uh -huh. that produce that oxygen for us to breathe. Trees have to have water that waters them. Mm -hmm. They have to have sun in order to do photosynthesis uh, for photosynthesis exactly. to happen. They, uh, and, and I'm just getting started. If, exactly. you, if you start to look at one thing and just follow the trail, be honest and mm -hmm. follow the trail, whatever it might take you, yeah. and follow the trail, you will, you'll find God there because somebody had to do that. It's too complex otherwise. Exactly. I mean, from, from just like you said, from the simplest thing of breathing to even the most complex or large scale, I, I guess the better word, to our placement of our planet, in relationship mm -hmm. to our sun and what's around us. I mean, if we're just one degree off that way, right. we wouldn't have a sustainable life on this planet. I Absolutely. Mean, just amazing. And, uh, and God created it all. And that same creator, and this is what blows my mind every time I think of mm -hmm. it, uh, that same creator loves me and loves you, Cesar, right. knows us, you know, knows how many hairs is on our head, as the Bible says, cares about us, cares so much that, you know, he sent his son to die for us. And right. that... That's love, and again, how somebody could hate that beyond Absolutely. So, so I'm encouraging you to get the book. Get the book, folks. Um, I want to get back. Uh, I want to, we want to take a break for a song just a minute, but when we come back, I want to know your goals for the book, what you accomplished, and uh, who the primary reader should be for okay. the book. I think it will appeal to everybody, but I'm telling you right now, if you have somebody in your uh, friends or family, that is an atheist, or maybe they have a lot of questions, get them this book, you know. Um, you can hand an atheist this book. Mm -hmm. They'll burn it. They'll do whatever they want. I don't know if they'll burn it, but they, they won't mm -hmm. read it, you know. Mm -hmm. Or if they do, they, I don't know. But mm -hmm. a fictional, you know, uh, book like this, you know, that'll somebody will sit down and read. Absolutely. You know, somebody will read it. So that's what I love about television. People that wouldn't normally go to church, you know, um, they could mm -hmm. sit there watching it. Maybe they're in an atheist house like we're talking about that maybe it's shunned for Christianity. We can get into that house. Or maybe they're in a country. You know, they can watch online. And um, just there's ways mm -hmm. to get the gospel. Absolutely. And that's exciting to me. So anyway, we'll be right back with more Cesar and uh, the great pretender. But right now, Al Jaron Wright and Triumphant Praise, we praise your name. All righty, Al Jaron Wright and Triumphant Praise doing a great job. Uh, we're going to wrap up this hour here in a few minutes with Cesar Perez, again, uh, author of The Great Pretender. And if you're just joining us, atheist meets Christian, atheist Christian fall in love, atheist gets his world turned upside down. That's pretty much it. it? You got it, yeah. <laughs> um, how is the response? The book just come out, came out in February, so it's mm -hmm. only been out several months. Um, how's the response from the book? So the response that I've gotten is really good, good. so far. Um, people from all walks of life have read it, and, um, and I've gotten really good response. Now, I have to give credit to, uh, to people that I've used to help me edit it. Oh, yeah. Um, I, had, uh, I worked with the company New York uh, City to actually go through the content and, and point areas. They didn't change anything, but they pointed areas. Uh -huh. And it was really neat because the lady, uh, I think it was a lady, uh, that went through that process, she basically told me through one of the comments that she was an atheist. Wow. Um, she just basically said, as an atheist, blah, blah, blah. So she started battling me back and forth um, over some of the things that I wrote. And, and it was great. Wow. It, was, it was really awesome because... I wanted. I didn't want it to just be one-sided. Uh -huh. um, I wanted to be fair to to both sides. Right. Um, because the, one of the goals is to is of, the main goal is to share the gospel. Okay. Um, but I wanted to contrast these two 
very opposing worldviews, the yeah. Christian worldview and the postmodern worldview, mm -hmm. and their impact on people's lives. Yeah. Um, and just kind of build the case for both so that it's fair and so that it doesn't sound like I'm bashing anybody right. because I'm not trying to bash anybody. I love them. Yeah. Uh, that's why I wanted to spend the time to, um, to write this, to hopefully give them more clear information to yeah. understand Christianity a yeah. little bit better and, and give it a, more of a chance. It's also, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's also a book for, um, for the believer uh, uh -huh. because... Poor old Nathan, he goes through some up and downs, and um, especially, especially if you read the first two chapters, um, he's in a real mess, uh -huh. And um, but God has never given up on him. He's, exactly. he's going to give him a, another chance, so I hope that a believer will read it, and as they're going through these up and downs, some things are going to make more sense, and they, they might see some areas where... where they realize that they're not as close to God in those areas as they would like to, and maybe it prompts that conversation, right. and they can go on with a more meaningful uh, relationship. Right, right. That's awesome. I love that it was already ministering before it was even out. You know, that, that's so. Cool. That was really cool. That is awesome. You know, and you can't bash the the, the unbelievers. I mean, what what if? I mean, look at Christ. He never bashed anybody. I mean, he got kind of mad at the money changers. That's mm -hmm. about it. You know, he didn't say. Oh, you know, you're going to hell. No, he said you need to follow me and get your get your life right. You know, right. Um, but we can't say, "Oh, well, we hate you because you don't believe in Jesus." We love you. We love you as Christ loved you. And uh, I've seen it too much. And when you start bashing atheists or or any other religion for that matter, um, that turns people off so quick. Right. And it doesn't. And it's not showing the love of God through us. I mean, it's showing our own. You know, humanity, I guess, our own idiotic mind, I mean, at right. that point. And we've got to get out of that and get in the, the supernatural with Christ, even though it's hard. I've got atheist right. friends. It's hard, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it's hard for them, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't easy for Nathan or Kate. So right. um, that's funny. So well, where, do you, uh, where do you see the book going from here? I, like I said, it's only been out a couple months. I want to make sure you get this. Again, Amazon.com. Five stars. That's mm -hmm. impressive. I mean, I, I buy a lot from Amazon and online things. You don't see many five stars. And mm -hmm. I don't mean it was like four and a half, four and three quarter. It was a solid five on there. It's pretty cool. Thank you. Um, but where, where can they find it locally if maybe they don't have access to a computer? Or so it's available at some of our local bookstores. Um, M. Judson Books in downtown Greenville. Okay. Uh, Fiction Addiction, uh, close to the mall. Um, the books on um, the shops on trade in Greer, okay. downtown Greer, and then Hub City Bookshop wow. in Spartanburg. Awesome. So, so they carry it, there. and I'm very thankful to them. Yeah. And um, I'll actually be doing a book signing this Saturday awesome. uh, from 10 to 2 at M. Judson. There will be other writers there. But if anybody would like to come by, I would love to meet them. Yeah. And, um, now, where is that at again? Is that M. Judson uh -huh. is in downtown Greenville. And that's in downtown mm -hmm. Greenville. What time yeah. does that start on Saturday? It'll be, well, it's from 10 to 2. Okay. So, mm -hmm. awesome. be there a while. Man, that's exciting. So, as far as where it goes, wherever God wants to take it, yeah. um, there's a lot of books out there. People have a lot of choices. Mm -hmm. And um, th this, was, this was something that it took me about eight or nine years. Uh, to write it, uh, wow. just because this is not my full-time job. Right. Uh, but it's something that every day he nodded at me. It just called me. I had to do it. Just wouldn't leave me alone. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why I felt like it was something that God had um, commanded me to do. Definitely. And this was this was a, an act of obedience. And I think that's what happens to to people when when God, when the Holy Spirit is pursuing them to do something, mm -hmm. He's not going to leave you alone. Right. Um, he's going to stay on you, and, and, and that's what happened here. Exactly. So I worked as hard as I could to make it the best it could be. Yeah, and I mean, you're already getting that reward back for obeying Him. I mean, you're already seeing, like, I go back to the publicist or editor or whatever they, they call them. Um, you know, that e even if she still believes the way she does, you planted that seed. You know, you opened her mind up to a creator, to God. And, um, you know, if that seed blossoms, that's awesome. Right, you know, absolutely. That is awesome. And that's my prayer for every show on, on here, anytime we have guests on. I mean, our heart is just to win souls, right. you know. And uh, 
if if you know people Christians can get out of it too, you know something out of it, great. You know if you're, uh, which I hope they 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 get out of this mm-hmm. program. <laughs> uh, but if you, that brings you closer to to Christ, wonderful. Right. But our main goal is to win souls. I right. Mean, and uh, man, that's exciting. So. And, and well, how, how can people get a hold of you if they uh, uh, missed any of the information or uh, maybe want to have you come and speak or share? So I think my there. email address is right there. Right there. Um, and then you can go through my Facebook page. Okay. Uh, just go to Facebook and search for it The Great there. Pretender Novel. Um, and you can message me or um, I, I would be... I told God I will walk through any door yeah. as long as it's a door He's opening. Exactly. Um, even with when you're not comfortable with, you know, it's out of your comfort zone. Like television. Like television. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this has been this really is, good. This has I'm been great. You, when I got when I first started doing this, I was way outside of my comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Was writing a book. Kind of, of course, you had the first one, but even that first one was that kind of nervous for you to start or. Um, I, not really. It's, it's a very um, lonely role. <laughs> I mean, you're just sitting there by yourself, and, yeah. uh, and when you have uh, a, a real job, then you just have to find the time. You either get up early in the morning uh-huh. or uh, you stay up really late. But every time that I've sat down, writing is hard. Uh-huh. Uh, it just, it just, you don't want to do it. Uh-huh. Uh, but you have to do it if there's a story that you have to get out. Right. Um, so... It, it was it was just extremely fulfilling um, just to when you get in the zone and and you feel like there's something developing and you get to create these characters and and you kind of get close to the characters right. uh, they become very very personal to you and when the people that have read it have told me stories about you know things that have has made them feel yeah. um, and how who their favorite favorite character is and uh, it just it just means a lot so it's 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 worth the work. Good. Very fulfilling. Yeah. Um, is there a third book in Cesar Perez's mind? I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. I'm just going to have to find the time. <laughs> I hear you. Yes, I would so, love to. So get the book, The Great Pretender by Cesar Perez. Um, I'm going to read that. I'm looking forward to this. Thank you. And again, put his information on the screen one last time, y'all. Uh, Facebook, um, The Great Pretender novel. And then uh, there's your email on there, too. Mm-hmm. Um, at Yahoo, but Amazon.com, both paperback and uh, Kindle, Kindle. Mm-hmm. and Kindle version. So, so Cesar, I want to thank you so thank much. Thank you for very being much, here. man. It's been thank an honor, you so much. and uh, I look forward to the book, The Great Pretender.